happy Saturday. Welcome to episode 11 of 20 Questions With. Today's special guest is going to be Jesse and Whitney from Days and Days. I'm really excited about this one. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Erin Micklow and I host a show on YouTube where I interview bands, cover their live sets, and do festival recaps. So let's bring Jesse on. We're gonna do this one in two parts because they're in different places. Um, and obviously with Instagram Lives, you can only bring on one person at a time. So first we're gonna bring on Jesse, do some questions, do some songs, and then we'll bring on Whitney. So let me see if they're in here. Ah. All right, let's try this again. I had a talk with the band on the DMs and I think we're all good now. I think we're ready. Um, for those of you just tuning in, this is episode 11 of 20 questions with days and days. So let's see if we can connect this time. Woo, here we go. <laughs> We are connecting. Hi! Hello. You're here. You're Hi. Here. How's it going? I'm so sorry. I'm so uh, technologically inept. I could. I was like in a panic. I could not figure out how to do this. So, uh, oh, Whitney helped me through it. But thank good. you. Um, I was like, I was stalling as best as I could, but that was like the longest five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so so sorry. I apologize. Uh, thank you oh, for your God. patience. I You're appreciate it. You're going to um, do interviews now. It's weird. It is. It's surreal. It's fun. <laughs> At least we have this, though. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into our questions. You actually just released a brand new album last week called Show Me the Blueprints. It's amazing. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. Yeah. Um, so you've notoriously been a DIY band where you do everything yourselves. But this album was actually released on Fat Records. Can you talk about how that happened? Was, uh, I think a sturgeon from Leftover Crack showed Fat Mike one of our songs and he he was into it. So he just asked if we wanted to do a record with him. I mean, that was uh, after touring, doing a few tours of Leftover Crack, we like back sturgeon for an acoustic run that he did. Um, but yeah, it was just everything kind of fell in the, into place. Right place, right time kind of, kind of deal. Totally. I mean, it's, that's a big deal for you guys though. I mean, what's, was the transition for you guys making this album with such a prominent label difficult after kind of doing everything it, yourselves? We really thought it was going to be where like, it, it was so overwhelming because I mean, we like flew out to California where we're going in this like studio that no effects has recorded like all these incredible records in and, and, and uh, but they were, they were so patient with us and the, the transition was really smooth. It was like, basically like, recording in our closet but i didn't have to like do all the mixing and hit the record button and stuff it was it was a really good time that's awesome yeah i know like fat usually takes a pretty heavy hand with their artists where they they really want to be involved when new albums are dropping that they're putting out and for you guys i was reading that all of your previous albums you recorded them like in your closet in texas <laughs> yeah no they are they did not anything we wanted they were like we, that's another thing we're worried about is that they were gonna because there's like a whole fat record sound you know yeah. that people talk about and we're like well we kind of like what we're, we have going on um already so and, and they, they did not you know try and fuck with what we already were working with they i mean they made little suggestions like i think the only two things we changed was mike um suggested that we lengthen the intro to My Darling Dopamine and the like bridge to Librium. That's the only differences that they made in the whole record. Yeah, I've heard that, that it's like with that, they, they want to be a part of making the records, but they also still want to give artists some kind of freedom because it is your sound and they did bring you on as being an established band already. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they were great. But we did learn how we thought this whole time that we we had been doing vocal harmonies and all we'd been doing was like octave harmonies. So we did learn through John Kerry of Old Man Markley, uh, the genius that recorded us uh, on this album, how to do actual harmonies. So now we know how to do that. So that's a good takeaway. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, obviously when you do things yourselves, 
and you don't have any outside collaborators, you're, you're kind of missing those experiences to grow and learn. Yes, but I mean, Wit and I have, are the only two that write for days and days, and we've been writing with each other for a decade. So I think it's easy and dangerous to get caught in those creative loops. I mean, you could be writing like a, what, with technically a good song, but if it's just the same thing that you've been doing forever and you're bouncing ideas off the same person back and forth, nothing's going to change. You're not really going to grow or progress as, as an artist. Totally, because there's nobody there like really pushing you outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, definitely. So what's your favorite song to play on the new album and why? I really like Goodbye Lulu Part 2, just because it's a... Um, like the chord progression feels good because it's like it's like G C and D shapes mainly, but like capo it on the second fret and my uh, action's crazy high on my guitar, so it like it feels nice on my fingers and um it's just it makes me feel good. I wrote I a lot of people are like Did, oh my god, is Days and Days breaking up? Is this like your goodbye song? And I was like, No, I just it's talking about it now it seems dark, but I just wanted a song that, like, if I die before, like, my parents or my wife, that they can have something to go back and listen to and be like, all right, you know, it's all right. It's good. At least, you know, have this. For sure. I like how at the end of that song, there's, like, a secret track, and then it's kind of, like, your <laughs> style, but a little bit more techno and dancey. It's a, that was uh, Sturgeon's doing. He ca uh, came to us with well, – well, he wrote that song, uh, and like all the music and everything. And he asked if we would do uh, verses for it when we we're on tour with them so we could play it live. And uh, we did that for a tour and it was a blast. And then when the record rolled around, he was like, maybe we should do that as like, like a lo-fi version as like a secret track. And of course, like, yeah, duh, that's gonna be great. Yeah, it was really cool. It's a, it's a good secret track because it's, it's a little different and far removed for like, you know, to be like a, a track just on the track listing, but it's a nice little surprise at the end of the album. Yeah, I feel like that last song's a little heavy, so it's nice to end the whole thing with like a palate cleanser, you know? <laughs> yeah. Something sure. like a little goofy. Yeah. So you guys have some really unique and like untraditional instruments in your band, like a washboard and a gut bucket. I didn't know what a gut bucket is, but for everyone out there that doesn't, it's like a basin with a stick and a string. <laughs> um, so can you talk about what influenced you to choose those instruments when you started adding more members to the band? So originally we wanted to have like a punk band. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that shit adds up. Like amps, cables, a, a practice space even, like a, a vehicle to move all that equipment. It, it gets real pricey real quick and we're like, well, maybe we could just like supplement, you know, drums for like one washboard. And then instead of a, paying a hundred dollars for like a cheap bass, we'll just, you know, spend $20 at Home Depot. So it's, it's kind of at, at a necessity and then it just stuck because we like the sound. Yeah, I was thinking about that too for when you guys tour. It must make it a lot easier like to transport your instruments because I would imagine those are all kind of collapsible as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> – I remember one time we were uh, – it was on a Left or a Crack tour, and they had – they were at the venue at, like – the show started at, like, 8 maybe, and they were there at, like, 5, loading all this gear in. Everything just in one go. Like we walked in with our entire setup, and they're like, "Fuck you!" Like <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> I did it with two for you. If something breaks on tour, you can just hit up a Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, so it's so simple. <laughs> it sounds like a really um, an easier way to be a band. Yeah, yeah, I cut some corners, definitely. So before the band actually started, and in the band's early days, um, for everyone out there that doesn't know, you and Whitney were actually a couple. How did you manage to continue as a band when that kind of ended romantically? Um, <clears throat> I, I think we're, it, we started writing music to cope with each other because it was such a toxic relationship. Um, 
And then we just loved the music so much and playing the music so much that that was like our, our therapy. And I mean, obviously we still love each other as people and we always have, so we didn't want to split entirely. And, and there were some like really rough years where it was bad. Um, but, but, but I think a lot of really good songs came out of that. Um, a lot of really cathartic songs for us at least. Um, yeah, I know we, we always just put, I think we put our band over ourselves and that was like the bottom line. And, uh, I mean, time heals all wounds. So now it's, that's great. But yeah, it was rough. It wasn't easy, an easy thing to do. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, it's kind of like, God, you guys, you work so well together. So I would imagine that transition of, of just trying to be in each other's presence while you're kind of coping with with you know shifting from a romantic partners to just trying to be friends yeah a lot of um drunken yelling after shows and dumb shit like that but uh i'm gl i'm so so glad that we've uh we landed where we're at now it's nice. for sure so what's the best piece of advice you'd give to bands out there to kind of create harmony in a band? Because obviously there's a lot of bands that can't even keep it together that were never romantically involved. And you, you know, managed to, to surpass that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I, it might sound cliche, but communication is key. I think if someone in the band has an issue, you have to speak up. We have like our little Facebook group where, you know, that's just the four of us. And anytime anyone has a problem, we air it out and we all talk about it. And we, we, we find a, it's, it's like a family. I mean, it, you know, you get mad at each other, you get over it. You get mad at each other, you get over it. It's just, we're a, I, I love these kids. They're, they're my best friends. And, I, you know, we wouldn't ditch each other for anything. That's so, yeah, awesome. just talk about it. Find a solution. Don't stuff things down because that and rats into toxicity. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with ego, too. I mean, you guys seem like you're all really down to earth. And like, at the bottom line of communication is usually if people can't come to some kind of resolution, it's because there's ego involved. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Um, I think none of us ever thought that we'd actually be playing music as like a full time thing. So we're just happy to be here. So I think that probably helps. I think a lot, maybe, I can't speak for any other bands, obviously, but it seems to me like a few bands that we've played with here and there, maybe they seem like they are, they just expect to be there, you know, to be playing music for people and for people to be listening. But you have to remember as a performer that the people listening are the people giving you the chance to do this amazing thing. Um, yeah, and I we try not to lose sight of that. For sure, and you know the music industry is fickle. It's like one day you can be hot, and the next day you're not. So it's like it's important to stay humble and to be grateful to your fans because without that draw and without your fans, like you said, you wouldn't be there. Yeah, but essentially we're all just uh, homeless people, really. Like the the people that listen to our music are the only. The only thing that separate that, that that makes it that makes us uh anything. I mean, we we all just live out of a van all year. We're just like we're just kind of like hippies with guitars and washboards. Oh my god, you're so <laughs> funny. Um, so your shows actually do get pretty rowdy. I've seen a bunch of them on YouTube. Um, I think I'm not sure if I ever actually had the pleasure to see you guys in person, but from all the videos I've seen on YouTube, they get really rowdy. So in the 12 years you've been a band, what are some of the craziest things that have ever happened at your shows? <clears throat> so going from like bad crazy to good crazy, we played it in New Jersey one time. We were playing in a basement and uh, someone, it was, I mean, it was like a 15 by 15 foot basement. It was really small and it was like packed. And we were like pressed up against the wall. We were playing and uh, someone ran in and threw a, like a military grade smoke bomb in the room so like it, it, it was just chaos out of nowhere it was horrifying I all I can remember is Megan grabbing my hand I felt like it was in like a war movie <laughs> Megan like grabbed my hand she was like we gotta go 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 like leave the guitar go 
We're all like, <laughs> it's just like people laying down. It was crazy. We finished the set outside, but so that was terrible. And <laughs> that wow. sounds really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it was not <laughs> safe or fun. Um, uh, another time that, that I've been that I have uh, talked to uh, that I talked to Whitney about the other day actually was um, we played Resist to Exist Festival. I'm pretty sure it was in Germany. It was like a ton of people. It was an outside festival, so we're on like a big festival stage, like the ones that they just set up, you know. Uh, and, and we play this song called Self Destruction Anthem sometimes at the end of our shows, and it's like a sing along song. Yeah. Um, so we'll invite like a few people up on the stage to do like a little improv verse or something. And so I don't know if it was like a language barrier thing or if everyone just didn't care, but we like, we asked like a few people to come up and like everyone came up on the stage. It was like, had to have been at least 50 people like on this stage. The, uh, we felt so bad because the stage hands were so bummed. Cause I mean, obviously they said all the, like the you know the cables are taped down everything's like set up nice for like the band after us and then it's just like a show on the stage we're like at, by the end of the set we were crowd surfing on the stage in front of like a, a festival crowd it was ridiculous I, that was my favorite moment and also my m most remorseful because i feel so bad for the people that had to like rework all the cables and everything yeah shit that's crazy Oh yeah. Well, so that's the end of the actual questions I have for you. I wanted to ask, will you play us a couple songs? Yeah, definitely. Um, I take my headphones off. I hope this is. I'm bad at framing. <laughs> you're good. As long as you're not like sideways, I think you're fine. That seems good. All right. <laughs> First one's kind of old, but it's relevant right now. We're all stuck inside, we're stuck where we're at. I don't, I don't, it's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My wife is about to throw a tuner at me, and I know I'm gonna not. I'm gonna miss it because I'm nervous. <laughs> They'll like hit you in the head. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. No, see, that's that's on three. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, there we go. I wish we were leaving tomorrow, you'll say, I really can't blame you, cause I hate to stay in the same place too long, swear it drives me insane. The smell of the air, the roads and the people, they come too familiar, no longer exciting to me, that's annoying, I just have to get away. But now the ease kill me, it's for you, so what do you jump in the car and drive away? We worry about gas a little later. When we're broke down on Interstate 10 West, I just can't stand it here for any longer. And I do that in my favor. One more day, I'll firebomb this fucking place. You never know. Time to want to go to jail. Got the fucking sun. And why it won't make it back to you doubt everything? All the friendly things you need are for you to distance But at least I'm so happy to know I mean that's all you need I'm not saying that we're old I just don't feel the first to know After all those times we've been done Shut up, we're broke and fuck tomorrow Cheating, stealing, begging, borrow Never even got to play the cup We'll sing Whoa, 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 whoa. Said too, yeah. Yeah, can we? Yeah, of course. So my wife Veronica is gonna join me for this next one because I cannot, for the life of me. Keep the kazoo there. What if I fight? What if I fail? Keep the kazoo. You want to like <laughs> dip in and say hi to Aaron? Hi, hi. Veronica. <laughs> I'm gonna.
going to play this thing. Put over here. <laughs> so you'll hear me in the that's bracket, just slightly off camera. See if I can screw this up. This has been so fun. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. This is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, well, I really appreciate it. That was a blast. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting, uh, chatting with you. Yeah, thank you for being here. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to bring on Whitney next. Um, they're in different places, obviously, and with this quarantine and Instagram live streams, we can only do one person at a time. Um, so let me see. Let's give it a minute so she can reconnect to their account. Whitney, request me. Do you want to go live on the band account or do you want to go live on your personal account? Because I see that you're in here. Do, do. Let's see. Let me just wait a minute. <laughs> hey, everyone. Let me see. I'll request... Well, fuck you too, Barbie. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Why 
why are you watching if you don't like me? Bye. Um, <laughs> everyone else out there, hi. Hi to all the nice people. <laughs> all right, I got a request. Hold up. Do, do, do. There we go. <laughs> hi. Hello. <laughs> Yes, I, I figured it out. Yeah, thank you so much for being patient with us. I was like texting Jesse. I was like, you got it, you got it. I was like, you got to go to this place and other places. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's all good. I mean, it is weird doing, like I was telling him, it's weird doing, you know, interviews like this now. I mean, it's kind of fun because it's a more relaxed environment. There's not like the yeah. nerves of a show and everything, but. I don't know. Weird. I think it's more like terrifying. <laughs> Really? Yeah, just because of, like I thrive off of a uh, like a crowd. There's a crowd here. There's I know, a but virtual I... crowd. <laughs> yeah, definitely a uh, something to get used to. <laughs> it's it's weird. It's weird. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into our questions for everyone out there that's just tuning in. Um, you guys obviously have a new album that was just released last week. It's amazing. I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Ah! So being a DIY band from the beginning, I saw that you actually I don't want to be. Oh, yeah. We can see you. Oh, God. Uh, Sturgeon's over here trying to do my lighting for me. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Um, so hey. you actually recently posted that your album is for sale at Target, which I think is amazing. Have you gotten any backlash from that? From um, okay, so thank you. I appreciate you. Hey. <laughs> um, pretty much like I, I go to Reddit only when I'm like, being like, okay, let's see how the internet really feels. People uh, on Reddit are probably the meanest out of all the platforms. Oh my god, it's like <laughs> this other like form of like self harm. I just like go on there. I'm like, yeah, I am a piece of shit. No, it's like no. But um, uh, they did like a poll and they were like, are they sellouts? And uh, like nine people said yeah, but like 58 people said no. So I'm gonna base it off of like how honest Reddit is. Being like, we're okay. And my mom was stoked about it. So, I mean, that's cool. <laughs> you know what? I think it's amazing. You guys have been doing this for a long time. You've been a band for like 12 years. And, yeah. you know, you've worked really, really hard. You, like, do all the managing and, like, the booking and everything. Yeah. And well, so don't I let anybody shit on your parade. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, it was, like, this thing where it was how long we've taken to find people to work with and not jumping the gun and getting every offer that was giving to us. Like we're not, we're here for the long haul. So we want to, you know, 12 years, it's just like a drop in the bucket for how long we want to like keep doing this. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like while you guys have done a lot, it's, you can see that this is kind of like, you're still, like this you know it's it's you're not I, you have so much more space to grow and continue to to be a band yeah like that's that's pretty much i mean all, all of our like albums are just like archives of our life and growing up and like growing old or whatever like so this is just another chapter into like what we're gonna come up with next, you know, or what life throws at us next, and how we're gonna interpret that into our music. So yeah, for sure. Um, so you actually, there's people out there speculating that it's not you playing trumpet on the new record. I think you're a beautiful horn player. Can you <laughs> clear up these rumors? Okay, so I don't know if I should take that as a compliment, like. Of course it is. Like I, I was just like, did I play too good? like or something I, I think it was the fact that i i was able to do multiple tracks of my trumpet so there was the, like these layers that i've never been able to do before like when we were recording in the closet like so like going in and into like a real studio and they're like just do what you want to do and i'm like oh my god <laughs> like 
fuck yeah. I can make an entire horn section just with myself. I'm like, in heaven. It was awesome. So, I mean, yeah, it's all me. I mean, have I did do, uh, like, he guested horns. And we credit him because it's like, I was just, Everyone always has guest vocalists, but no one has like guest trumpet players and trumpets like my jam, like brass bitches all day. Like, oh my God, I love it. You need to make that a t-shirt, brass bitches. Right? Oh yeah. Um, so how did you get started playing trumpet and like what drew you to that instrument? It's kind of a unique instrument when you're becoming a musician to be drawn to. Well, it was kind of, okay. So I was a, like, I learned how to like, read music before words like I was a piano player up until I was like 12 and I finally went to like public school like I, I used to go to this like creepy like one room schoolhouse like that's probably why I'm so weird and I'm a bank like a band kid so it's like those combinations it's fine but um when I when I got into band I would just play like the clarinet or some shit and they were like no, you're a trumpet player. And it was just like, okay. They brought over like the high school band directors and they were like, look at her play at the trumpet. She's never done this. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And I got a big trophy for most improved. And That's so it, was awesome. just like, it was like faded. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like a lot of times in school bands, it's like, you know, when they're putting people together for like marching band or whatever, they're just like, here, here's the instrument here, that's yeah. available. Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy. I didn't know. I was kind of reluctant because I was, I don't know. The trumpets, I mean, it's it's my favorite thing in the world, like, currently. But it does take some time to be like, all right, what the fuck are you? How the fuck are you going to, like, how am I going to, like, have this, like, musical relationship with this, like, thing when I'm a piano player and... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it it definitely fits me though. Yeah, which is cool. <laughs> At least it's small, so it gives you that. that yeah, you don't have movement when you're on stage. Hell yeah, it's small and loud and annoying, just like me. It's like perfect. <laughs> it's like fucking sick. Oh my god! So on top of piano and trumpet, you also play guitar, which I read you started playing guitar because Jesse couldn't make a show, so you had to like learn all the songs in one night. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, it was horrifying because we had a sold out show at Bossa Nova in uh, Portland, and I was like, how the fuck? <laughs> so pretty much, I went to guitars, like like bought a guitar. And on the drive there, I just poured um, like super glue on my fingers because I didn't have any calluses. So I was just like taking my my fingers and like looking up the finger like the the chord structures and just going at it. And I've been tr I'm still not the best at playing and singing at the same time, but. I think I've I've figured out my my little niche in like being a, being a guitarist. So that's awesome. I mean, I'm yeah. impressed by that. I I can't play any fucking instruments, and look how many you can play. <laughs> what is happening? There's something being set behind you. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's my chips. Yes. Oh, you did do it right. Boom. Sergio made it backwards, so you can see it. <laughs> So yeah, everybody out there, obviously musicians in this time are out of work. So um, I wanted to encourage that on my show as a shout out to Zach from Pears, who did it the other day. Um, everyone tip, please tip yes, your artist. Yes, directly to our band. This is our band thing. Yes. I can't believe yeah. we did That's so silly. Oh my goodness. If you can set it somewhere where it can just remain for the interview so people can see it while we continue on with our questions and things. Again, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, they still have their jobs, but they're just working from home. But people like yeah. us that were very much artists and independent contractors, it's like, fuck. I know. But when this whole thing started, I would just like, wake up in the morning and it was kind of became my routine. I would just roll over and look at my phone and more dates would be like 
canceled and I would just scream. I was like, fuck, for like five minutes and then go back to sleep and just like do it over again. Like it, it was definitely uh, at the start of this, it was a, a shock because I think yeah. this is the longest that I've been in one place in over 10 years. So my entire mind is always on the road. So being like, yeah. what do you mean? I can like unpack my bag. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like what's going on? So. Yeah. And it's, I mean, artists have had to get creative with how to make income in this time. And yeah. it's, it's hard. It's definitely pushing all of us outside of our comfort zones, but it's like, well, we're going to continue to do what we do, but we're going to do it in this, this way that we're doing it now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta adapt, you know, and it is, I mean, it is intimidating, especially when you're so used to doing especially something so personal like your art um trying to like readjust and adapt to the new the new normal um but we're doing sure. our best <laughs> i don't know for sure so um <laughs> you've actually cited in older interviews that leftover crack are one of your biggest influences and for those people out there that don't know you and sturgeon are actually engaged yeah um congratulations Thanks. So, Thank how did the two of you get together, and how has that influenced you as an artist? Um. So, I was I was like waiting for this question. I was like, how? Because, like, leftover crack is Jesse's biggest like influence for sure. Mine's like Nutra Milk Hotel. I'm a fucking like indie nerd that just like loves to scream. So, um, it's a uh, I think, especially during this quarantine, he's like, um, <laughs> just, helped me he's with signs. Things behind you. I know, he's trying to post it up. <laughs> you can kind of see it. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, as we were, we were like, like best friends for four years or so before we got into like our relationship. And I don't know, it was like really organic, just, there wasn't even it was just like I love you and then like everyone wants a family and everyone wants love and kindness and understanding and I think um like the friendship and the relationship I have with that person uh can't <laughs> can't <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just. It, I mean, Go in the other room. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, it is. It, it just. I mean, it is. Just that friendship where it's. Hey, I got your back. Like I like you can calm down now. Like you have a family. You have love. You have, like all these things that I mean, especially being musicians, you you don't get to grow like roots anywhere. So having someone that understands that and who supports my band like he's my biggest fan and it's just a i don't know i think it's like one of the most beautiful things that That's i've ever so had horrible. in my life <laughs> so yeah oh fuzzy love guts that's so cute i love it <laughs> <laughs> she's town no <laughs> Um, so you actually have a solo album that you're working on. Can you talk about the creative process for you making that and how far along you are? Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, my whole writing process is basically me just experiencing shit and then writing like 20 pages of it and trying to piece out what isn't like total trash. And um I don't know. It's a, it's like I feel like there's like weight on me at like from all of my different traumas and all my different experiences and there's like a list of what do I need to tell people about my story? Like what do I need to get out there and how can I do that the most articulate way that I can? And I think every song this is why it's been taking me so long is um I I don't want to misrepresent my story to anyone and um that kind of editing process is a lot of just experience over like i don't know uh day-to-day -day 
and so I'm, I have like I have, I'm halfway done <laughs> I've been uh working on it like every day <laughs> so That's awesome. I just hope I mean it, I, I don't even know if it's like a thing for me to even worry about anyone liking it or not liking it it's just something that I have I feel like I'm obligated to do as far as giving myself a voice that's that is independent and that is something that I can look and be proud of yeah yeah I think the minute that you start making things um in hopes that people will like it is the minute that it, it's it's not going to be authentic and then people usually won't like it yeah and it's like a writer's block when you're like oh my god this is shit and it's like no it's not shit like it's just I don't know. I, I went through I, I went through a couple years like this this past couple years like of this writer's block where I don't know, you get influenced so much about like these outside sources when it's just text on a screen, you know, and that's how you kind of have to like like I don't know, shift your per per perception of these this criticism. It's like they don't know you. They don't know, like, I mean, of course, take it all in, but don't let it, uh, like, rule rule your artistic, like, abilities to to be able to share your music. Yeah. For sure. Aw. So, um, I want to ask, where did your alias, Death by Squirrel, come from? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not Death by Stereo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everyone's keep Everyone's always like, yeah. Um, Do no, people really say that to you? <laughs> surprisingly, I'm like, okay, that's fine. You it's can like, no, you, you guys stopped reading. Like, you stopped reading when you saw yes. the Yes. You need to continue to read. So when me and Jesse were kids, um, we, we used to call each other, he's younger than me and I'm smaller than him. So it would be like little boy and little girl. And then it turned into little boy or little bird and little squirrel. And then I was just like death by squirrel. <laughs> like, cause everything got like shattered around us. I was like, I don't know, death by squirrels. <laughs> and then you wanted to spell it differently. And so no, that was like... Jesse's idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he was like the squirrels. And I was like, cool. That's funny. It's a cool name. It's cool. Yeah. Um, so last question before we jump into some songs. I saw on your live stream yesterday that, you know, like many of us, you've been struggling in quarantine. It's yeah. fucking weird. It's weird times. And I, I appreciate your vulnerability with that so much. So what's some of the things you've been doing to cope? And what advice would you give to people out there that are also struggling? I think, that, like, it is a... Like, it is a transitional, um, like, weird time right now. Like, you you do have to fucking, like, face the person in the mirror, quote, unquote, you know what I mean? Um, and those quiet times have become louder, I guess, um, with everyone dealing with themselves. And it's it's just that, that stepping back and being like, okay, like today, especially the like the rep repetition of every single day, kind of looking the same. Especially in quarantine, it's like, oh my god, like becoming dissociative because you don't know what day it is, and it's every day is awful. And it's like, what's going on? <laughs> Help! Um, but I mean, there is this kind of strength in finding out and grounding yourself from those dissociative episodes and from those like times where it's like nothing will ever get better. Like the more days that you figure out, you keep surviving and keep being okay. Uh, I think in the long run, it's gonna, I think it's gonna be beneficial for everyone. So I don't know, maybe not, but I, I'm, a, I'm optimistic to a fault. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's definitely a struggle being forced to really be with yourself and all of your feelings yeah. every day. And some days it's Fucked like, and I'm just going to get drunk because I can't deal with this shit. Yeah. Like and then it's like, I mean, it is hard. But, you know, if you can, you know, go through it, 
then you'll come out of it maybe having discovered things about yourself and, and as a stronger person. Yeah, and being able to like find that comfort level of maybe you wouldn't have been able to reach out to anyone, but since it's it's given this more of a, a like a more of kind of like a leeway into being like reach out for help like call people because I mean you can't physically see them so a lot of like like times that you're hanging out with friends it's pretty shallow and pretty like you know you're just drinking or doing crazy shit you never really get the time to bring your your emotions and your personal life into other people's like oh yeah <laughs> it's sure Aww. Well, so we've got about eight minutes left. I want to close with, will you play us a couple songs? Yeah, I can definitely do that. Can um, you, can you flash your tip sign one more time? I'm going to, yeah. um, I'm going to pin it in the comments. Oh my God. Oh, he taped it. Oh, no, he taped it. Um, what is the email address? I'll pin it in the comments. Oh my God. Hold on. <laughs> hey guys. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> what is it? Days and days? Booking at gmail.com. Okay. It's a PayPal. Yeah. Days and... Mm -hmm. All right. Days. <laughs> Booking days. at gmail.com. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm going to pin that in the yeah. comments. Um, and I would love if you played us some songs. We've got about seven minutes left. All right. I'll do them back to back. Uh, this first song is called Rewind. I'm going to play two of the new... Uh, the new record. Woohoo! All right. The second one, I think I've only played correctly, like all the way through once in my life, so it'll be fine. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. You're good. All right. So I moved up to New York. I moved my entire apartment from uh, uh, from Texas up here in a day. So oh, I had to shit. leave my guitar. <laughs> that sounds like that was really stressful. Oh my God. I was like fucked up. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like cried for a week. I was like, oh. So glad I did it because I would be so not okay alone in Texas. <laughs> this song's called Rewind. Where am I insane? Do I really must be over and alive till it all fades away? When am I insane? Keep pointing out my buddy My insides are void Then it burns It hurts me a lot Today means nothing Tomorrow Can wait Hey, I saw that This story to tell Just not for today Where did you go? You're not I remember no childish games to a life drowned in addiction. Where did you go? The summer brought a smile, now clouds overhang the remains of dreams we used to chase. Words we used to dangly say. What a so play you start to rain as to rain such a Tell me why should I rest to be my last breath If all of this crumbles in the end Maybe what you will see is all You'll ever get from me And sometimes you gotta find a little rewind Rewind in your mind even if it's a lie today, but something tomorrow still 
can wait. And yesterday's a story to tell. Just that it'll for today. All right. Yeah, one more our song. Yeah. Woo! You have such a beautiful singing voice. Thank you. On tour, I lose it all the time because I scream a bunch and people are like, you don't sound like the record. So I was like, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I think this this is definitely a, I hope my, my voice like come back to where, where, where it should be. Instead of just like screamy town. <sighs> okay, uh, this next song is called Ditches. Uh, and it's about being good enough. Because, yeah. Got stomped out, so I can't sit tight. Scared to take another step without falling. Don't know if it's me I hate, or all the faults and choices that I have made. So just for a home, but I can't stop myself from running. You get wasted and I'll hide away. After 25 years of my jaded, bitter age Just dry your tears, it's more to life Ruin that you're worth a damn when you've always been good When you're not out, whoa, whoa, whoa.